Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I really got thinking about this, the competency of individuals with um, intellectual and developmental disabilities in the critical justice system or the criminal justice system. Yes. And um, I just wanted to know, are uh, competent to stand trial? Mm. Mm. Now it says a mental disease or defect. Oh, uh, this was uh, the National Center on Criminal Justice and Disability. Yes, uh, uh, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The IDD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interact with the criminal justice system at a disproportionately higher rate compared with those without IDD. Oh, it's almost as if those that that can think for themselves, they don't have a disease or a defect. Yes. They don't really work with the criminal justice system. Um, while it's important uh, for criminal justice and disability professionals <laughs> to embrace the aspirational goals of making the system work better for individuals with IDD, uh, must also recognize the reality of the role of competency determinations. Yes. In the criminal justice system, in the impact of findings of competency or incompetency. Now, uh, just reading of this, mm -hmm. people with IDD and the competency, the numbers. Right. The estimated number of people with an intellectual disability facing uh, criminal charges. Uh -huh. Approximately 4 to 10 percent of those that are arrested that are facing criminal charges. Mm -hmm have uh, an intellectual disability. <laughs> Although self-reporting may skew the data, studies have found <laughs> that between 4 and 10 percent of adults who have been arrested mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and who are facing criminal charges uh, out of the 100 percent, yes, approximately uh, 96 percent of them don't have some sort of disability. <laughs> A uh, training program with defendants with intellectual disabilities who are found incompetent to stand trial. Now, this is very, very important to myself because you you paid witnesses, right, from the state of Washington multiple times, yes, to say that I don't have the mental capacity to assist in my own defense, yes. Now, individuals with intellectual disability found incompetent to stand trial, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, twelve point five to thirty six percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now this is very difficult for a lot of states to understand because that's a big number differential. Mm -hmm. You would think it's maybe thirty to thirty five percent, but uh, there seems to be a twenty three and a half percent difference. Yes, of those that are not competent to stand trial and. Um, mm -hmm. You said that um, I was unlikely to regain competency within the treatment period allowed by the RCW 1077088. Yeah. I'm incompetent to stand trial. Oh. I'm of those 12.5 to 36% of individuals <laughs> that are in the 4 to 10% of persons that get arrested and are charged for or with a crime. Yeah. That are criminally charged, yes, that are incompetent. And the court found that I was not competent to assist in my own defense mm -hmm. or understand the nature of the proceedings against myself. Ooh. Now, um, being the incompetent uh, American citizen that didn't know where I was at. I <coughs> Your uh, individual that, uh, that did the mental evaluation in 25 minutes when I was in jail? Yes. And then uh, Phyllis from Western State Hospital? Yes. Uh, one study found that 12.5 to 36% of individuals, yes, are not able uh, to stand trial. Pooch. I happen to be, well, of the 4 to 10%, let's say it was 6%. And of the 12.5 to 36%, we'll say it was 25%. <laughs> of all the arrests that are made in the United States, Clallam County found me incompetent 
to the point that I'm in the 3% of the total arrested population of persons that are not competent to stand trial. That's right. Of 97 out of 100 arrests, <laughs> I'm that three uh -huh, arrests where I'm incompetent and I'm not competent to stand trial. Now taking 4 to 10 percent and 6 percent to be the middle of it? Yes, approximate number. <laughs> Well, four. Oh, is it seven? Is it is between? Well, there's three on three to f three plus four, seven. Another three is ten. It's it's a mathematical question, isn't it? True. See, you would think if you had a four and ten and divided by two, it'd be seven. Yes. Mm -hmm. But is seven actually right in the middle of four and ten? Oh. See, you have five, six, seven. Yes, and you have eight, nine, ten. Yes, you do. It really isn't as difficult as it is. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs>